Hey guys, it's uh, Flybar here, and uh, what I am a sucker for, that's uh, internet deals. I bought this uh, drone just before Christmas for, for uh, $129.99 with free shipping from Focus Camera. Uh, this is the Jamie drone, and uh, what I'm going to do in this uh, video is do a slight unboxing and uh, do a little flight demo of uh, its capabilities. And uh, let's go ahead and get started. In the box, this is what you're going to receive. You're going to receive the Jamie drone. See right here. I have taken off the uh, gimbal protector on here, but this is it. It's got a two axis stabilized gimbal, 4K camera. There's a USB plug on the back, and that's for this USB wire that came with, or the cord, uh, cable that came with the drone. It's right here. You have a propeller removal tool, some 3M sticky pads, and the reason why you want to put the sticky pads on there is because this thing will go ahead and land on the flight battery, and as you see here, it's quite wobbly so instead of it just landing right on that battery they provide you with some 3M sticky pads this is the USB charger right here and here's the cable that gets plugged into your uh, wall socket and this is a US charger right here it comes with four, four, four propellers and each propeller is uh, color coded to the drone itself. You see I have green here and green down here and red and red and of course that corresponds to the color of the propellers and to which way they spin on. It is quite easy to go ahead and loosen them up, take them off because they are self-tightening. This is a 3000 milliamp 16.8 volt battery and this thing weighs a ton. This thing is heavy. This is not so bad but you put the battery in here with the drone and it has a good heft to it. Now the build quality on here is it's not bad. It's not a bad drone at all. It's got a nice feel to it. Packed full of sensors as you see here. Sonic sensors as well as uh, forward collision sensors on the front. Now the gimbal protector here is just a rubber protector and I kind of like the way it's set up. And in fact, I like the way this camera's kind of set up. It's kind of set up you know, inside the uh, drone itself, it's not going to be knocked or knocked around or anything like that. It's nothing similar to the uh, Spark if you own the Spark, but this is pretty much how it gets placed in here. Just push it right in there, and there she is. A nice protector on there. And you can pull it off, squeeze it aside, pull it out, and, and that's the drone without the gimbal protector on the back side. You have the uh, power button, and plus you have the USB. Um, now, photographs are stored directly to internal memory on this drone itself. I've been able to figure out how to go ahead and transfer them off through the Jamie app onto my iPhone. I still have yet to figure out exactly how to get this off onto my Microsoft PC. The Microsoft PC didn't do the normal chime when you normally plug in a USB device, I had this powered on. I waited for uh, Jamie to tell me that it was ready and initialized. And I plugged it into my laptop and I got nothing. So what I had to do on this video that I'm about ready to show you uh, in a few minutes is I had to actually download it from the drone to my phone. So uh, there's a lot of figuring out. I haven't given up on this drone yet. I'm still figuring it out. I just, like I said, I just got this drone. I've been caught up in doing my drone room rebuild, but uh, as far as what I have now, this is what I've got. Of course, it comes with some type of documentation. It's just standard. It tells you about the app. It tells you exactly how to download the app to uh, your device. And uh, if you're on iOS, uh, it's the app is just called Jamie. If you type in Jamie, it will take you there, and you can go ahead and download it. 
basically explains exactly about the phone functionality and all that. Um, not a whole lot there. The most important thing is learning about the battery. Say for example, if I, I see a green light on the battery, unfortunately on this intelligent battery, in order, in order to really know exactly where you're at on it, you have to actually remove it from the uh, drone. You remove it from the drone, you push this button right here, steady green light tells me that I have 91% to 100% on that battery. A yellow light 61 to 75% and red 16 to 30% and uh, indicator flashing in red quickly it's 0 to 15%. Unfortunately the battery that I did originally receive had nothing flashing so I knew it was completely dead. Okay I got the uh, J. Joan uh, initialized is basically one press and another long press and it starts it up just like if you have a DJI product like a Spark it's the same exact thing and I'm waiting for it to uh, scream out to me in some sort of Chinese uh, accent that Jamie is ready and I sure wish this, this had the amber pack in it Amber is sexy. This voice is not. Just wait to hear it. Let me grab my iPhone. Jamie is ready. See what I mean? Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go ahead and do a uh, screen recording off of my iPhone so you guys can see exactly what this app actually looks like. Let me head over here to uh, my Jamie. Jamie Fly. That's what the app is called. And actually, in order to get into the, uh, the drone itself, you go into your Wi-Fi settings here. You go to Wi-Fi. And you'll see Jamie OB PC. That's it right there. Now, the password for you initially to get in is just a lowercase Jamie12345. No spaces, just lowercase Jamie. JME12345 and then it'll get you right into the, uh, the Wi-Fi of the drone and it'll come up and say there's no internet connection. I don't know why it's connected now, but you know, there it is. No internet connection. Okay, let's slide on out of that. Don't need that no more. Still a little screen recording here. I'm going to go into Jamie Fly and We'll get into all that jazz in a bit. There she is. She is looking at the camera. She's looking at YouTube right now. And see, it's not bad. It's 720p is what she does her FPV feed in. And that's what you're seeing here is just FPV. PV feed. She's flying around. Let's pretend she's flying around and into the camera. Okay. All right. Now you see that, right? Okay. Make sure you're lined up. Okay, you're right. Now at this point I could take off, but no, I'm not going to take off in here. So. What we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and over to the settings. The settings that little wheel on upper right hand side. Okay. And for some reason, when I have it in mode one, and for some reason this this app seems kind of backwards on this wife on this um, particular app. Now if I put it in mode two, everything is just messed up. If I put it on, on mode one, of course I have forward in back and right and left on the right and on the proper side and then I have up and down on this side yeah if I put it in mode 2 just see what I mean yeah. so I think they kind of have that backwards that's what I want to say I don't, I don't know and of course you can go ahead and set your uh, gimbal sensitivity low to high uh, just kind of left it alone next screen I can go ahead and do the flight protection, I can set the outdoor, out, outdoor return altitude, outdoor virtual fence, and 
return protection and all that jazz. I haven't done it in this uh, next one. I can just basically calibrate the drone, and calibration of the drone is is basically doing this until she says, "Ooh, now see, I can calibrate like this." All right, I'm gonna have to recalibrate. Probably don't want to do this inside the house, but I just wanted to show you just for this video. There she goes. I'm going to go really slow. Oh man, see, look at that. I'm going kind of slow. And there she's, calibration is, su is successful. Now I can take off and fly. Luckily, I don't have any type of propellers on there. So the next screen over is the shooting settings. I can do uh, single burst, time lapse, and delayed uh, format. I can set my format. Uh, grid, I got it on none. In fact, I got a normal video format. I got it on MP4. Uh, let me see here. I can do automatic and manual settings. See if I go to manual, I can go ahead and set my ISO level. See what else I got on the manual. Let me just go back to automatic. I don't have to fool with that right now. Uh, video quality or photo quality? Well, photo quality, I have it on 16 by 9. 4 by 3 just doesn't make any sense. Uh, video resolution, I do not have it on 4K, and there's a reason for that. I have it on 1080p. The reason why I don't have it on 4K, uh, 4K on this only records in in 20 uh, feet per second, um, and I don't know if you've ever seen time lapse video. 20 feet per second kind of reminds me a little bit of like time lapse video. It's very juddery. Uh, that's the only word I can think of in in the type of video feed that you're going to get on on 20 frames per second. I would really like to see. Um, um, something like 30 frames per second at least on this because supposedly according to documentation that I've read on the internet on this camera this does have a Sony sensor in there so why they didn't give us anything higher than 20 frames per second on 4k have no clue and of course you got uh, 720p high never shooting 720p let's see what it, it gives you anything now just I never really shoot anything in 720p. If you have 1080p, shoot in 1080p. Now, and of course, this is the uh, gimbal calibration. I can do one right now. Uh, save it. Okay, thank you. Uh, let me see here. Camera time sync. I, I can go back to factory data settings on here. I can format the SD card if I want. Um, I do. I'm still trying to figure out exactly how to get this internal memory because it has like 32 gigs on here, uh, or 23 or 24 gigs on here. Um, I'm still trying to figure out how to pull this information off onto my Microsoft personal computer. And I went back. I went back, and that's it. Kind of went back. I hit the back button, and I went back to. the the front uh, first page, and of course, I have no satellites in here. Although I went ahead and uh, calibrated it. Now I can go ahead and record from here. Boom! I'm recording right now, and it'll do the uh, time meter on here and how much you've recorded. And according to this, I can go ahead and do a photograph at the same time as I'm recording video. See, and I'm thinking it pretty much just captures a portion of the video. I don't know if it's actually a true, just a regular true camera. Um, hey, it does give me uh, 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 some sort of map on it. So now you all know where I live. So I can go, come on, I can go up and down with this gimbal. I'm already up on the top stop, so we'll go down with it. And there you go. Okay. And I can take off and fly if I want. But I have to press and hold that button. Let me see here. And now she's done. And I land. 
And that's pretty much on the Jamie drone here. I'm going to show you this uh, flight video that I took. And I'll let you guys be the judge to uh, whether, whether uh, this is a drone for you or not. And uh, here, let me go ahead and get to this uh, video here. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward to an interesting spot right in here. Okay, I'm going to take off from, I'm just flying in my backyard up on my garage. As you see here, if you look really closely do the playback, you can see some gelling in the video. And what I'm doing here is just testing out this camera just to see in the lighting conditions. Um, I chose this yesterday. This is yesterday afternoon, just before the sun went down. And I know I'm turning it into the sun, but I'm doing that for on purpose just to see exactly how this camera compensates. And I can see some jelly. I don't know if it's prop wash or gel, uh, but I do see some in there. It does a pretty good job when you aim the camera down. Um, you don't notice it as much, but as soon as you bring that camera up, yeah, that's my half half done uh, building project by my swimming pool. But, but as you bring the camera back up, you're going to see some jelly in here. You know, I'm going to fly this forward. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'll turn it around. Um, I know this is kind of a boring flight, but I want to I want to show you the type of quality that you can get uh, just on the just on 1080p, 30 frames per second. See right there, you can see some jello. That's the camera fully up. Um, I probably should have brought this camera a little bit down. Maybe that would have, that would have taken care of that, but. Uh, I'm thinking that this is a lot of that has to do with these propellers because I'm not really too keen on these propellers. One thing is these propellers are extremely noisy and this is a lot, this is the noisiest, this is the loudest drone I've ever owned. Uh, but you see here, it should at this point do better because I'm just flying just gentle at this stage. But you can see some waffling, some I don't know, see, you can see some lines going through there at some point. Some, it looks like, uh, you know, you see right there, that's, that's gel. I'm trying to explain exactly what I'm looking at, but I'm sure you can see it too. Uh, it does pretty good on, on, on saturation. It really looks good. You can see that, you can see some of the trees that have no leaves on it. You can see the pine trees, and they're nice and green. It goes in the sun and does a pretty, Pretty decent job, actually. Um, right there, you can see that the, the, the colors are the same colors I, I see when I'm looking out at the uh, area itself. I mean, it's not, it's not too colorful, it's not overly saturated, and actually it does a much better job when you point the camera down, like right there, and watch me, you're, you're gonna see me flying forward, and uh, you don't really see that that jello as much. Come on. Come on, fly bar. Fly, fly, fly. Don't just sit there. But, uh, yeah, you'll see that if it, it does a much better job down than it does up right there. But, you know, you're not going to fly with your camera down. For that, you might as well get the, uh, uh, a different camera that just basically points at the ground all the time. <clears throat> but it, all, all in all, I mean, what, what I'm thinking that this actually competes with, and uh, kind of sad that the, you know the, this drone was introduced at this time at this p price point. I know it's packed full of technology. Oh my word! This, this you see right there is not doing so bad. Um, but it all depends exactly. I mean, you can see some jello. Some of it is usable. Yeah, I would use some of that footage. No one, right there I wouldn't. You saw that. That was kind of like either prop washer or jello. But what I'm thinking about this drone, how it competes, and it's kind of sad that this, inter, this uh, drone was introduced at the time it was without a lot of updates being made. Uh, it was kind of rushed out to the market. I think it went to CES and people went, oh, look at that drone. And of course, they, you know, all manufacturers that are new that don't have deep pockets like DJI, they'll go ahead and rush their drones out. And that's a sad thing. Uh, I'm glad that Altel did not do that with their EVO. Um, but for female robotics, 
Jamie Drone, and they certainly did. And it came out with with issues such as as what you see here. And uh, big dog reviewers didn't like it, and nobody bought it. So it sat on warehouse ch uh, shelves for the longest time until a person like me came around and purchased one. There you go. See, aim down on the ground. You really don't see any jello. It does actually a decent job. A lot of this can be cleaned up in in software updates. Now, like I said, I have just purchased this not long ago. I don't know if there's any software updates out there right now for this. I'm hoping that there are perhaps some software updates we will see. Um, but uh, I'll keep you posted. This is not going to be the first time or last time I fly this drone and, and have it on this channel. I'm going to keep at this. I'm going to go ahead and keep on this. And I keep on um, pushing this issue away. What drone does this remind me of? At this point, price point, $129. What does this compete with? I would actually say it competes with the Bugs 5W. And if I were in the market to buy a drone and I only had $129 in my pocket and I was a, a startup YouTube vlogger that want to get on YouTube to have maybe some short flight videos of the place where I am located and, and, and vlogging from, I would certainly all day long go with the Jamie. Uh, the reason why I say this, this uh, actually, just, this should actually complete with the five, uh, 5W, the Bugs 5W, is because if you look at the uh, Bugs 5W, um, if you really look at some of the flight videos that people have been posting who fly that drone, they supposedly that has a 1080p camera, but if you really look really close, to me that is only a 720p camera all day long. This camera beats it, it looks a lot better. You see that, look at that. that there's nothing wrong with that except maybe a little bit of jello. Perhaps some of it can, can be cleaned up in, in PowerPoint, uh, or Power Director, or one of the uh, video editing softwares that you may have, but there's nothing wrong with that. It some, has some issues to it, yeah, it's not perfect. It's not the DGI Spark 1080p, almost 4K quality, because nothing can compete with that, actually. But this drone, for what it is, if you can get it for $129.99, buy it. Um, now, for me leaving any type of links to where I got this, it's too late now. I mean, so a, lot of these, a lot of these sales I find that are out there for a couple of days and and I don't ask questions, I just hit click the buy. Um, and that's the whole thing about the internet. Uh, it's not designed in such a way that if you finesse it, you can find deals. And how I found this deal is from Focus Camera. There was a coupon code, kicking it down for this right here, not this, I bought that separate, to $129. And I asked True Drone Reviews, hey, is it worth it? He said, jump on it. And I bought it. And thanks to uh, True, Drone, True Drone Reviews, I have another headache in my, my, my shop right now to figure out exactly how to, to work it. It's not really a headache, but you know, any, anything you buy new, any drone you buy new, they're, they're not the same. There's, you know, they're going to have a little bit different ways they set, you, you set them up and all that stuff. For, for instance, I have to figure out how to get this connected to this right here. And this could be a lot of fun. So I'm going to have a few uh, videos of this. And this is me coming home. Um, I'm going to come around here over my roof here and land this shortly. And with that, I'm going to kill that. I'm going to pause that. Come out of that. And uh, kill this uh, recording. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and get this uh, video posted. So I hope you like this. I hope this was intuitive. I, you know, if you're in, if you're looking for a cheap drone, if you can find this for 129 bucks, by all means, buy it. I cannot guarantee whether you're going to get the 23 minute flight time on this. The reason why, even though they sent me a new battery, I don't know if it's going to take me a few cycles to cycle through to get the maximum voltage out of this. But I'm certain that these, as well, have been sitting on the back shelf for a while because. I'm only getting about maybe about 10 minutes out of the side battery. But I, 
we'll see. And even if for after after ten minutes, is it is it a dud? I would say no, not at one hundred twenty nine dollars. But certainly, if I bought this two years ago at six hundred dollars, I would be absolutely disappointed in this drone. Trying to find everything I can do to get my RMA number to ship it back. I would, yeah. Um, but at one hundred twenty nine dollars, it's no brainer if you're looking for something cheap. $129. Can't beat it. So, till next time, guys, we'll talk to you later.